Gotta bounce back. Shout out to my homie Keys, Xavier Keys, on the vocals on this. Okay. Honestly, they couldn't stop me if they wanted to. Gotta get up, go out and get it, and that's what I'm gonna do. I've been focused, I'm not hungry. Yo, I'm starving, dude. Grind mode with my team, we making these power moves. Honestly, they couldn't stop me if they wanted to. Gotta get up, go out and get it, and that's what I'm gonna do. I've been focused, I'm not hungry. You're gonna starve me, dude. In grind mode with my team, we making these power moves. Cause I ain't got no time to be wasting with all this music I'm making. Man, I'm tired of being impatient, so I keep making these moves here with my crew. Vow to myself to overstay true, so I don't care what nobody else do. I know why. Like an erection, bumps in the road, but nah, I ain't stressing. I don't work out, but homie, I'm flexing. Every time I get on the beat and I bless it. Rise and shine, and I never let another come and stop my grind. Cause I grind all night at the gig, no lie. Then it's back in the booth for some overtime. Come on. Nope. Mm -mm. Shout out to Miss Alma Ramos. Shout out to Miss B. Uh huh. I said, uh, hey, hey. Hey, my mom's told me get them, so I don't care what y'all say. I just keep grinding. Yeah, I stay working, cause it's, you know why I'm, I said, uh, that's right. In the lab with a pen and a pad, I, I, let's ride. Make it look so easy, don't let make y'all mad. One thing I know, one thing is certain. I can't stop, won't stop, cause me and my team stay working. One thing I know, one thing is certain. Can't stop, won't stop. On the grind, getting mine, I'm working. No sleep, spit heat, killing these tracks, and I'm not gonna stop till I'm up on top where I'm supposed to be. Everywhere I go, I scream as Pete. We more than a crew, we a family. Working, trying to get a couple Grammys. G have them sitting on top of the mantelpiece. Thank God. Go hard, they just mad cause I'm on my job But where I'm from is to the ground to starve I'm starving, I just can't do it Not having it, unthinkable So I turn in the stretch, I'm strong And now I can reach the unreachable Let's go Hey Trying to Yo, they I said I can't sit still I just laugh at y'all haters Cause I Yeah Hey 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 Hey, mom's told me so why don't let's go i just keep yeah i stay because it's you know i'm i said i that's right uh in the lab with a pain in the pad i i let's ride make it look so easy doesn't it make you mad one thing i know one thing is certain i can't stop won't stop Cause me and my team stay working One thing I know One thing is certain Can't stop, won't stop On the ground, get in mind, I'm working Don't ever let anybody tell you That you can't get what you want Whatever you dreaming for, you get out there and you get it You make it happen Never mind the haters Real still Cause I All day Always Get them Yes sir I'm grinding, stay working, hey, I said I, that's right, in the lab with a pen and a pad I, let's ride, make it look so easy, don't it make you mad, one thing I know, one thing is certain, can't stop, won't stop, cause me and my team stay working, one thing I know, one thing is certain, can't stop, won't stop, on the ground, get in mind, I'm working. Gotta get up, gotta get up on my grind, grind. Yes, sir. Love them. Rise and shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m.
Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is 8.01 a.m. And you are listening to, watching, here with, feeling. Good morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. The first episode, interview, and show of 2022. <laughs> yes. Lord, Aisha Saxon, good morning. Josie Mendoza Geller, good morning. We have a great interview today. We have a great guest today. We have recently appointed Kane County Circuit Court Judge Bianca Camargo. What is up, Bianca? Yay, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks for the good claps. <laughs> Thanks for the good claps. <laughs> How you feeling? A little nervous, yeah, okay. but good and appreciative that you're allowing me to be on your show. <laughs> no doubt. We, we appreciate you very much, as we talked about. Uh, just watching your work and what you do in the community, having a, um, having a slight knowledge of the work that it takes to try to do good things in you know, justice and law enforcement, what have you. So we're glad to have you on the show. Thank you. Um, how was your New Year's Eve? It was nice. Uh, we usually keep it pretty tiny with my family, so we just okay. celebrated at my dad's house in North Aurora. It was nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. How was your New Year's Eve, all you <laughs> wonderful people out there? Cheryl Brownell says, good morning, Aurora. Happy to be here for the first show of the year. Cheryl, we're always glad to see you in our comments. Raquel Orta, good morning. Raquel Orta is also going to be on Buenos Dias Aurora coming up very, very soon. Y'all stay tuned for that. Good morning, Raquel. Cruz Ocho, good morning, dear brother. And Aisha Saxon says, good morning, Judge, crew, and family. Blessings in 2022. Yes. Good to see y'all. Man, the chat is lit already. <laughs> Y'all not going to waste no time? Okay. Um, so we've got the normal news that we talk about, but we do want to get a sense of who you are and what you do. So for those who are unfamiliar with you, uh, introduce yourself and let us know where you're from. Sure. My name is Bianca Camargo. I um, am born and raised here in Aurora. Yeah. Uh, I started off on the east side of Aurora on Pier Street, the 700 block of Pier Street. Um, started at Hermes Elementary, which I just loved <laughs> okay shout out to Hermes. <laughs> uh, me and my sister I, we, we used to walk to school from our house and uh, we would pass banana split mm -hmm. and sometimes we may have taken some change out of uh, our parents like little change jar to buy ourselves a cone on the way home from not school. the worst thing in the world that's why you got to in law enforcement right you know what right, I'm, I'm gonna like, make it better <laughs> But yeah, uh, and then my parents moved us to North Aurora, and that's when I started in the uh, West Aurora School Districts. Okay. Uh, I went or district. I went to Goodwin, then to Washington Middle School, and then graduated from West Aurora. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. So an Aurora story, mm -hmm. and um, keeping that same Aurora story in a Kane County story now as sure. judge, which which we will uh, get into. Uh, so what's some of the early things or early experiences that you had in your life? which serve you good now in, when you're, in what you're doing? Well, definitely, uh, you know, growing up as a first-generation Mexican-American, you kind of get exposed to some things that do help shape you. Some mm -hmm. of that stuff um, that you hear, you know, maybe from guidance counselors or from some other people that are, um, somebody could take them as a, a negative way my parents looked at it like you know if this person said this to you and they're telling you that you're not going to succeed i'm going to show you how you are going to succeed right. and i'm going to tell you that you can do it despite all the obstacles that you're going to have to get through mm -hmm. and so um that was you know my parents they didn't go to college and you know but they had something much more valuable that they passed on to us they couldn't okay. show us the ropes of college but they showed us hard work dedication and de uh, determination and, and with those values I was able to make it to where I am today I mean good. those are three values that are with me and I've carried them with me this entire time good yeah. good glad to hear that <clears throat> glad to hear that Josie Mendoza Geller says we didn't go out on New Year's Eve but love getting a call from the GAM spam yeah that's right we call you <laughs> we call you better than a bill collector <laughs> You don't owe us 800 bucks. We just wanted to say hi. Good morning, everybody. Alyssa Ocone, good morning to you as well. Um, so it's, it because we're on the outside looking in. Sure. You know, for the people who are not uh, judges or in the, uh, the legal world, so to say, uh, we're on the outside looking in. What's the, what's the 
most common misconception people have about you, what you do, and what you're even able to do? Um, uh, what people think that I do in the courtroom, I think people, people have said to me <laughs> since I've been appointed, well, you know, you look through my criminal history and you know what I did in the past, and I sit there and I, I tell them, I know nothing about what you've done in the past. I think they, they think that we get like a binder on them, mm -hmm. <laughs> of like their criminal history, the facts of the case, and, and the law that applies, but it's not like that. We literally just walk out <clears throat> and we hear the arguments from the state, uh, we hear the arguments from the defense, and then we make our determinations based on that. It's not a situation where we have all that information at our fingertips. You wouldn't want that. You would, you, what you want is a judge who sit th who's sitting there, mm -hmm. who's neutral, who's going to listen to everything for the first time and not have any preconceptions about anyone. That's what you would want, a fair right. and neutral judge who's going to apply the law to the facts. That's right. what you want. In some cases, though, a person's priors do come up. They it's, do. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So Sometimes that's just a normal do. case of it, but people do not, but you're not looking through the... No. At age no. eight, you stole a turtle. <laughs> you stole change to get a banana split cone. <laughs> no, no. Um, and What's what I, I mean, do my DUI? <laughs> and what I mean by that too is, sure, are there cases where um, the defendant's prior criminal history comes in? Sure, but those motions have to be filed. They don't just come in like that. Okay. Um, and sometimes there are basis to bump up a crime, but um, uh, here in traffic court. I'm not getting any of that. Okay, so that's so th those are the cases that you are yeah, seeing. Right now okay. I'm in traffic and misdemeanor, which ah. I love being. I'm here at the Aurora Branch Court. I absolutely love it because it reminds me of the time where I was a prosecutor. I love talking to people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, a lot of people walk in, they're so nervous. You can see it on their face, and they're just kind of looking like – because uh, for the majority of the people that are there, this is the first time they've ever been in court. Right. And so they're scared. So like when I walk in, I do my um, my opening remarks and I always tell them, like, this is your day in court. OK, you need to know what's going on in your case. When right. you walk out of that door, you have to know what you're pleading guilty to, what the terms are and how to satisfy that sentence. Please don't leave the door. Leave this courtroom without knowing those things. Right. Because what I've seen since I've been appointed, you know, there were some people that pled out in August, so they're back already done with their sentence of supervision. But they'll come in and on their last court date and they'll say, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. So then that's why I started saying that in my opening remarks, like, you have to know what you're doing. Because in traffic court, the majority of the cases, people are getting supervision. So right. it's not a conviction on their record. And I always tell them, we want to keep it that way. Right. And the way that you do that... Don't pick up any other traffic offenses and pay your fines and costs. That's right. all you really have to do. Right. If you get jammed up, come back and see me. We'll give you some more time. Give you some more time. Like, no. <laughs> Not like that. Well, like, get out of here. <laughs> Sip your coffee. Damn. <laughs> no, like more time to pay the fines and costs. All right. <laughs> See, it's different, no though. No one's going. Yeah. It's a petty offense. <laughs> if this is Chuck E. Cheese, you get more time. That's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Maybe I should rephrase it. People are like, what? <laughs> oh, man. Karina Suarez Darden. Good morning to you, dear friend. Karina Suarez Darden was just featured mm -hmm. in a great article about her journey uh, with advocating for public health. Uh, it's a great article in the Chicago Tribune. Yep. I encourage everybody to read it. We'll probably share that later on our Facebook page today. The time is 8, 10 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning World, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Leonette Net Brown, good morning to you as well. Um, okay, so do you remember the first case that you ever took part in? What, as a judge or as a prosecutor? As a Oh, well, we'll get to the... We'll get to the prosecutions as a judge. Just like a regular status call or like a trial? Yeah, this is... Yeah. Oh, my goodness. There's a lie. Okay. I, I remember the first day that I took the bench. Okay. Um, and it was funny. That day, I ran into one of the sergeants because, you know, we're at the Aurora Branch Court. It's um, connected to the Aurora Police Department. 1200 East Indian Trail. You got it. Yep, yep. I know that because I was volunteering I, I was there. just going to say... <laughs> Um, yeah. Better never see you in my right. courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> <Not> you <want. laughs> 
But um, one of the sergeants came through before I was about to take the bench, and he said, oh, my gosh, Bianca, what did you have to do to prepare for today? Like, you have to read a bunch of books or, you know, look at a bunch of statutes? And I, I looked at him, and I said, no, I, I didn't do anything. I mm -hmm. just, you know, I'm about to come out, but I didn't do anything to prepare. And he's like, how can that be? And I looked at him, and I'm like, I've been doing this for the last 15 years. I've right. been in a courtroom for the last 15 years. I know how to run a court call. I know how to get people in and out, you know, right. and that's that's that experience of being in the courtroom for the last 15 years is what's serving me well now. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I know when I look out into the gallery and I see people that are starting to get frustrated, okay, what can we do to speed this up? And right. is there anybody who's just looking for a continuance? Anyone who's going to hire an attorney? Let's get you in and out. Right. Because, you know, people have been the traffic court and by people I mean myself and <laughs> I remember you know when I was 16 I went to court and I was there from 9 to eleven fifty, and I thought that was my whole morning oh yeah you know and I don't yeah. want that for people just to get <clears throat> a continuance that or just to get supervision mm -hmm. like it's just so now you know with zoom what we do is we start court at nine and in person is from 9 to 10 30 and then zoom is 10 30 to 11 30 11 45 <clears throat> but I tried like let's let's get people out of here right let's let's you know people have lives they're ready to move on yeah so um, I definitely that experience of being in the courtroom for the last 15 years has served me well I think it's also the nervousness too though isn't it it's like when you're in court like if you are just here for traffic mm -hmm. the longer you sit in court you hear the judge give other people time and you're like nah you know you just time like what time well you I mean you just sit you know do you ever give anybody weekends? Maybe? No. No? Uh -uh. Okay, good. Mm -mm. Good. For traffic? No, those are all petty offenses. So you cannot get. So your petty offenses are subject only to fine. Okay. Um, your misdemeanor offenses, so unfortunately, like your driving while license suspended, possession of cannabis by a passenger, those are your class A misdemeanors. They are subject up to 364 days in the King County Jail. Meaning you could. Those okay. are your max penalties. Gotcha. You can also get. Okay. And a fine. That's where I'm at. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Good to know. Good to know. Good. You know, you'll have some cases where you you might have to consider jail time, depending on what the circumstances are. Right. You know, if they're endangering themselves, if they're endangering the community. You know, there's a balancing act that comes with all of this. But okay. You're you're. I ran a stoplight. Didn't cause an accident. I didn't have my insurance ticket or on me. Those are. Good to I mean, know. Just, Good just to know. fine on those. All right. <clears throat> don't break the law, but don't worry. You might might work out for you. <laughs> okay. I have a couple pieces of news sure. that I want to deliver to you awesome, wonderful people. The time is 8.14 a.m. Good morning, Judge Bianca Camargo. We are so proud of you for all you have done and are still doing. Hi. Shouts out. Thank you very much. Yay! All right. Uh, applications are being taken for Kane County grants for mental health groups, homeless shelters, and food pantries. We told you guys about this. It would have been Tuesday and Thursday of last week. Uh, the application process is now open for $4 million in funding through the Federal American Rescue Plan to assist mental health organizations, homeless shelters, and food pantries that have been adversely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. To be eligible for a grant, applicants must be fully incorporated and operating as a 501c3 as of January 1st, 2019, deliver services from a facility that is physically located in Kane County, provide as its primary mission services to Kane County residents in the areas of behavioral and mental health, homeless shelters and food pantries, and be in good standing with all applicable federal, state, and local standards and requirements. The link to start an application can be found online at Kane County's homepage at www countyofcane.org. Monica has the day off. So that link is not going to be put in the chat for you guys right now because uh, I can't think and type at the same time and do all this. So we will make a separate post about that after the show. Okay. Also, told you guys about this. It would have been Thursday of last week as well. There was an error in Advocate Aurora's um, health patient information system and going out in the mail billing statements 
obtaining the personal health information of more than 1,500 of Advocate Aurora Health Illinois patients were mailed out but never arrived at their destination, according to health system officials. Patients have been notified and have been offered free credit monitoring. That's according to Advocate Health. The error was discovered around October 29th. It was caused by an accidental change to an account type in the health system's billing software. Just like that. Uh, the information was for 1,661 patients, including names, types, and dates of services received. Advocate Aurora has 26 hospitals and more than 500 care sites in Illinois and Wisconsin. Time is 8.16 a.m. Good morning, Ben Geller. How are you, dear friend? Okay. Now, let's talk about prosecution. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, how... How different is the, so as a prosecutor, let me make sure I got this right. I am working for the state, mm -hmm. trying to make the state's case as a prosecutor. How many years did you do that? Uh, over 11. Wow. Yeah. What was the, uh, what you like most about it? Um, doing jury trials. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jury trials. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You, so that's you doing that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yep. <laughs> You see this? <laughs> Tell us the truth. <laughs> it never got that wild. But, <laughs> but um, I really, really enjoyed doing jury trials. And so um, there was something about arguing to 12 people that have absolutely no idea um, about the law and arguing the facts to them and how the law applies. And so, I mean, that to me was always... Um, it, I used to tell people that doing a jury trial gave me life. You really? Know, it gave you a lot of excitement, like, let's do it. You know, we've done everything we could to try to negotiate this file out um, by way of reductions or some alternative. Negotiate or... this file out. Oh, yes. <laughs> I sound like a real prosecutor. <laughs> <That's>, so... <laughs> yeah, I think I know what that means, but for our listeners, what in the world? I'm sorry. Negotiate this file out. Right well, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, when you get um, assigned a case, you know, you look at it and you weigh the, you, you evaluate that case. You know, um, the char the cases have been charged through our felony review unit um, and there's probable cause. They've been arrested or they've been charged at least. And now we have this case. So you start looking in, you start diving in and looking at the police reports and looking at the law that applies. And you make your offers based off of that. Okay. You know, for example, if you have an individual who has no criminal history young kid made a dumb mistake property crime they're going to get the pretrial diversion program or that's what our offer is going to be right and if they accept that then we've negotiated that file out right if we've offered that they still don't want it um it's a situation where you know they want to go forward they want their day in court then we end up doing the trial okay so every case before we get to the trial state we've tried to negotiate it okay by by tendering an offer um if they're not happy with that usually that we get a counter and a mitigation packet we review that um and then if that still can't solve it then we'll go to trial okay mm -hmm. all right um now what was your first trial oh gosh <laughs> it was a it was <laughs> there was a group of individuals that were going into pet stores in northern king county and they were stealing um sugar babies or what they're called yeah um and so yeah theft of those sugar babies really mm -hmm. oh wow yeah. theft of sugar babies mm -hmm. um so it was just called theft but um it was a sugar baby that they were stealing. wow and that got a lot of attention which really threw me off mm -hmm. because um, you know, we have very serious cases that are coming through King County, but the press was there for the theft of the sugar babies. Right. But not for the child who was, you know, being abused. Wow. You, that's you, crazy. You know, I'm sure I know you've you heard mean. that. Yep. Um, yeah, that's sad. Yeah. That's very sad. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you are working with the jury and everything like that, I had to, I had uh, I did jury duty. Yeah, yeah, it was. Did awesome. you actually get it? On, did you get on the jury? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you I did. went through the. I made it through the screening process. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, but like you were in panel and everything. Did you? I got my certificate after completing it. Six, 16th Judicial Court, oh, St. Charles. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I've always wanted to be on a jury. And... It was amazing. I would do it again. Good. I'm glad to hear yeah, that. Yeah, I'm I would so do it glad again. to hear you say that because, you know, when we would do jury trials and we have the veneer that's sitting in the gallery and yeah. we're calling them up, as mm -hmm. you know, and we ask them questions, I'm sure you would kind of experience this where some people are just, they're not having it. 
they don't want any part of it. Oh, yeah. They consider that they're too busy, even though we tell them, like, this is part of your civic duty as a United States citizen. Right. People just are like, I'm too busy. I don't have time for this. But you should have time for it, right? Because this is what we're the foundation of the yeah. criminal justice system. I'll, I'll tell you this about <laughs> jury duty. Um, and I have been, the word of the day today will be cynical. I've been mildly cynical sure. at... Um, uh, perceived slights and the way justice is applied. Sure. But I have to say, after sitting on jury duty, like, I feel if I was the person in that case, I would feel like I got a fair shot. Good. I'm glad to hear you say that. Because, like, looking at how they did the whole, it took all day. Oh, sure. It took all day. Yep. Like, we were there from 7. I left at, like, 5 p.m. It was crazy. Um, was it a one-day trial? Oh yeah. Oh that's awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Um the um how the whole thing went, I have to say, like they gave this person ample they even let him scrutinize who made it. Like he was like, Yeah, number three. Sure. He didn't want that person in sure. there. It was it was very interesting. And that's the way it should be, right? You know, someone who's accused of a crime should have that opportunity when they're do when we're doing jury selection. Right. It shouldn't just be up to the state or to his defense attorney. He should have a say. Right. And I've seen that exercised every trial that I did. Always the person that's charged with a crime should have the ability to say, I don't like that person. That's or, right. You know, and for whatever reason, you know, we have a certain amount of strikes that we can... Um, you know, get, you know, excuse a juror. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if they want to exercise their right to get rid of someone, then they should definitely do that because, again, that's their day in court, right? right. And they should have it the way that they want. Now, this person also <laughs> had no represent. He was representing himself. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, as, as again, like, even he needed a public defense. He needed representation. Like I was looking out the whole time I was sitting there. I was like, this is not <laughs> this isn't going to end good. Well, I hate, I, so here's I've seen two spectrums, right? As a as a prosecutor, I've seen individuals who have represented themselves and uh, it's to their detriment. Right. right. Because uh, a lot of people do have a lot of experience, not like, oh, they went through the criminal justice system. So now they know how to you know, defend a case. No, they have a good experience where they know how the resources to use. Right. Like mm -hmm. the King County Law Library. I mean, you can go to the law library and they, they will help you with your jury instructions right. where to find the law that applies to your case. I mean, so you can go and you can prepare yourself. The problem is that a lot of people run into like when to make objections, how to ask a proper question. So they have a witness on the stand, but they can't pull the information out right. because they're not asking the questions properly. And here at Branch Court, what I've seen is a majority of trafficked cases that go to trial, the individuals are representing themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's phenomenal work that I see. Right. And I'm really like, yeah, <laughs> like, you did great. Yeah, how do um, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> other times it's very hard and, and I, I'm not to interject and I'm not to help. You know, I tell them, I have to admonish them. You're going to be held to the same standard as the attorney. I can't help you. Right. Procedurally, I can tell you how we're going to go forward, but I cannot tell you what questions to ask or arguments to make. But there are times where I, you know, they're just struggling and I, I will say, why don't you ask the person, you know, yeah. on this date and this time, were you right. in the intersection of blah, blah, blah. You're right, exactly. At least that kind of gets it going, because if not, they're just stuck. Floundering, yeah. 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 Um, okay, I want to give, I'm going to go to a commercial real quick. The time is 825. Ali Hernandez, good morning to you as well. Cindy Morales, hey, Bianca Camargo, hello there. How you doing out there? Everybody's tuning in this morning. Um, okay. Real quick, you guys, uh, where was the news that I had? Aha, I found it. You have just a few days left. Ninth, the January, or the ninth, oh. Sip, 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 sip. You know, yeah, 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 oh. <laughs> I thought that was gonna be me. Well, it's only 8.20 something. <laughs> still young, see? the morning is still young. Oh my gosh, my gosh. But you see, that's how we know we got a real fan here. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Um, all right. January 9th, you still have a few more days. The 9th is Sunday. <clears throat> January 9th at midnight, the portal ends for the ILRPP, the Illinois Rental Payment Protection Program. Uh, that program provides 18 months of assistance or up to $250,000 um, in rent relief 
for those who have experienced uh, hardship due to the COVID-19 pandemic. To apply, all you have to do is go to IllinoisHousingHelp.org or you can call the Neighbor Project at 630-906-9400 and someone will give you further instructions and help you out. Once again, do not forget that that portal closes on the 9th, Sunday at midnight so if you or someone that you know uh, can benefit from getting that rent relief please let them know a lot of people uh, are still having a hard time due to the pandemic we don't want to forget about them and it's a brand new year so we want to make sure that everybody can continue to to rise up and come along with us um, for this great year i'm looking forward to it bam all right now dan barrero is here ladies and gentlemen we get the clap for dan look at that GMA and happy 2022. Yeah, that's right. That is right. Um, all right. Um, growing up, what impact did your dad have in your life? Well, my dad and my mom. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to grow up the way that I did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're growing up and you start when you're a teenager you're kind of a jerk to your parents right? oh yeah yeah uh, and it's not until later in life that you realize my goodness everything that they did for us um to make sure that we were succeeding and and that uh we weren't going to be struggling so my you know my dad i'm so proud of him and everything that he did to to better our lives you know he was working as a um in the battery unit of johnson controls in a factory and yeah. there came a point in his career where that he thought i need to do a lot more for my family there's no way that we're going to make it on this salary and so he started um i was just talking to him about this last night he started looking doing some research where can i go i don't have a college degree what types of jobs are there are are out there for me and he stumbled on um IBEW Local 461. So the, the Illinois Brother, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. You got it. Yep. And so um, he started the application, and I he told me something yesterday that I didn't know, and it made me even more proud of him. Is that he started the application process, and it was a two year process, and after that first year, it, um, he was going to actually make the application, and he didn't get it. Um, they only picked seven people, and he was number eighteen out of the out of the uh, pool there, and so. He after he told me that I'm like you didn't get it the first time and he said no I didn't I said did you want to give up and he said absolutely not you know I had I had something I had a lot writing on this mm -hmm. I had your mom I had you guys and I needed to do something more and right. so um, he continued with the process and after the second term so after four years from start to beginning he finally got into the apprenticeship program. And so incredibly proud of him. You know, Shouts I would out. watch him. Um, I would watch him come home from work. He would drop his lunchbox and pick up his book bag. Literally, just go straight to the to the office, pick up his book bag, and leave to Wabansi because he was taking some night classes to kind of up his math skills for the the testing and right. all that stuff. And I was just at the time I remember looking at him like, what are we what are we doing here? Right. You know. But now I'm like, what a sense of pride and what hard work he was in showing us. Yeah. You know, it's like he was working a full time job at hard labor, coming home, saying hi to his wife and kids, and then leaving till ten thirty at night. You right. know, and it's like that's a type of hustle that was instilled on us. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to have, <laughs> I used to have a mantra when I was an undergrad. It was, um, I'll sleep when I die. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> And actually, I'll tell you. I still um, live by that. The the artist who does those stickers, I can't remember her name. Um, See if we can zoom in on that sticker. There it is. She's the artist that did um, Victoria Highland Maldonado's um, uh, on her book, one of her the one that came out for Halloween. She Monstery a, Donstery yeah, Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mari. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mari. Yes. Yeah. So she, I saw her for the first time at a fair this summer, and she had a sticker with a coffin that said "Sleep When I Die," mm -hmm. and I bought it because now that I'm running a campaign, that's my mantra: I'll "Sleep right. When I Die." Seriously. <laughs> yep. Because there's a lot going on, and you know you have to stretch yourself to so many different things, but. Um, and so that that's like the mantra that I've had, you know, I, that I had in undergrad grad that I have now in law school and all that. And that is because of my parents. Right. You know, you you have a, a goal that you need to achieve. You need to just work, 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 work until right until you get it. Because uh, and because you get to that point, you ask yourself, are you really trying to do this right. or are you not? Right. 
Do you want to be a lawyer mm -hmm. or an electrician? Right. Or do you not want to? That's what it takes. Yep. You you know, you have to you have to have that hustle. Like one of the first things people always ask me, you do this every day? Right. Yeah. Every <laughs> day. day. Every day. Every, every day. Yep. Does that mean Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? <laughs> Look, if you make up a day, I'll do it. <laughs> Call it month fry. I don't care. It, it's getting done. But see, to that end, it's the same <clears> thing with my mother. You know, my mother, for as long as I can remember, she worked two jobs. Right. And that was, those sacrifices were to make sure that we had everything that we needed. Right. You know, and at the time, you take all that stuff for granted. You're like, oh, yeah, my soccer stuff is paid for and all this. Yeah, you know who's paying it? Your mom's second job is paying those things. Right. You know, and now... When I, you know, as an adult, I look back at those times and I'm like, I should have been more appreciative of my parents and, and how hard they were hustling and, oh, and yeah. working for us. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, my, my mom also didn't go to college. She, um, her parents owned one of the, I don't want to say it was the first Mexican grocery store, but one of the first grocery, uh, Mexican grocery stores on Farnsworth there, La Michoacana. Mm -hmm. And she worked there, you know, and her, her, my grandpa was like, you are not going to college. You're going to work here. Right. And so, you know, it's these types of things that, you know, they, again, they didn't give us a college experience, but they gave us something much more valuable. Of course. Something that, you know, gave you the courage to do the things I that think, they didn't do. No, yeah. I, but I, I think also the college, um, I think that the experience, because our parents and our grandparents, they, of course, wanted their kids and offspring and grandkids to have what they never had. Sure. And for many of them, that was a college degree. Mm -hmm. But I think that because of that, that drive to put kids in college and make sure that they attain the best out of college, I think that a lot of the, a lot of the, blue, the blue collar stories that didn't make the college level, I think a lot of those stories have gotten kind of shadowed you mm -hmm. know what i mean because I've, I've interviewed a lot of people who didn't go to college but they're executives and i was like you know that's why i always ask people how did you know what was your first job like ron hayne mm. he was like pushing carts yeah. like he wasn't doing nothing right i mean nothing you are like he went to, well he went to community college yeah. but i mean anybody could do that you know you are completely right and not the more and more that i see you know with <clears throat> With younger people, it's like college isn't for everybody. Right. It really isn't. I mean, if that's the path you want to take, that's fine. But there are so many jobs out there. Right. You know, we have a, um, there are cases, unfortunately, that we get right now, even in traffic, like curfew mm -hmm. and truancy. And the local prosecutor, he's really good. He puts them on a diversion program. And the diversion program is, I'm going to give you a two month continuance in that two month time period. Write me a five page paper on, you know why college is important or what what jobs can you get without a college degree that that topic is the one that i'm going to talk about because this kid wrote a 10-page paper single spaced okay mm -hmm. I, you know how important that is oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> how yeah, much yeah, that I really do. is yeah about how many jobs you can get without a college degree mm -hmm. and i think the local prosecutor was gonna was his purpose was you're gonna see how important college is right what that paper turned out to be is look at all the amazing things you can do without a college degree right. you know you don't have to go to college to succeed right. you don't because that's not for everybody mm -hmm. the standardized like sit here you study you take a test that's not for everybody right it's, but that doesn't mean you cannot be successful it doesn't mean you cannot be successful at Time is 8.35 a.m. Mondo, Mondo, Judge Bank of Camargo 2022. Anna Sierra is here. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Anna Sierra, that is right. Everybody's tuning in today. Um, it's a brand new year. First show of the year. First interview of the year. First episode of the year. First everything. <laughs> Yay! Starting off. Starting <laughs> off right. Um, so... Oh, no, well, it's 8.35, so we still got some time, because uh, I want to stick with the, the perception, right? I want to stick with the perception of, of um, the judiciary sure. and us on the outside kind of looking in. Is it, um, why does it seem like, or why do you think that people have the perception that the court system is stacked against them? I think because in a lot of 
areas that it might be true. I mean, there are situations where, um, you know, people's interaction with the criminal justice system has not been a positive one. Right. You know, for example, I had an individual come in um, who I knew when I was a prosecutor. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw him walk, like come in, I recognized him and I know him and I know his history and all that. And he was so agitated. And I remember looking at him and, and he got so loud and he made a scene and, you know, he was yelling and he was cursing. And I was like, Mr. So-and-so, I'm like, what's going on? Like, why are you so upset? You're trying to put me back in jail. I just got out of jail. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is a petty offense. You're not going to jail. Like, right. that's not going to happen. And, you know, it, it got it got heated um, because he was very angry. And, and after he left and I calmed him down, I was like, listen, we got this. You want you seem very agitated. Do you want a continuance? I'll accommodate you. You can come back next week, next month, whatever you want. We got him out of there. And after, somebody said to me, why didn't you just hold him in contempt? And I looked at them and I said, what would that have done right. to this whole thing? Right. Just adding more, falling into the perception that we're just here to, to mess with people? No. That's not the proper response. It was a semi-empty courtroom. We got him calmed down. Something else was going on in his life that day. Right. Now, I'm not saying that's a green light to act like that in court. But something was wrong with him to, that day. I could tell. And I know him from previous interactions. And that's not the way that he acts. Right. But, you know, the, 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 the solution of well, just add more charges to him. I'm not doing that. Okay. I'm not. We're not doing that. Right. You know, the judiciary, that's not what we're there for. You know, we're here to help everyone in the community, everyone who's standing before us. The person that's charged with a crime, there it's their day in court. The prosecution, we're going to be fair to them. We're going to be fair to the defense. We're going to listen to the witnesses. And at the end of the day, we're going to put that all together and make our decisions based off of that. But to sit here and say that we, the judiciary is out to get people, no. That's mm -hmm. not what the King County Judiciary is about. Now, you had to run to be a judge. So I have to run now to retain my spot. But I was okay. I was appointed in July um, unanimously by the Illinois Supreme Court uh, All right. to be the next circuit judge in King County. So now you have to run to defend that. To maintain my spot, yeah. Okay. To maintain your spot. Very diplomatic how you... I like that. <laughs> I said fight to retain you're like not to retain my okay all right yeah okay um how does i mean are you able to perceive what the waters are like at this moment how does that you know how does it look does it look favorable or is there a lot of work to there's I mean, always I, always work of, to do right always so much work to do and, and you know it, it was funny because <clears throat> prior to my appointment i wasn't very political i wasn't involved with um you know the king county democrats or the aurora township democrats mm -hmm. i just wasn't i didn't have a reason to be political as a prosecutor um i just came in i did my job i followed the law i, I listened to you know the higher ups if there were you know decisions that needed to be made on a case right but i i didn't have to run to <laughs> to be a prosecutor nothing like that and so now kind of diving in and trying to navigate the waters of the political arena it's it's tricky oh that's the word i'll use it's there it's very tricky why did you have to make why is that a requirement it's it's not a requirement but it's a good way to get connections with people that know how to run campaigns oh, okay and they're you know on their learning and leaning on their experiences oh, okay I yeah see. yeah I see. no i don't think it's a requirement no and you know unfortunately i say this unfortunately we have to declare a party and I say unfortunately because we shouldn't have to. Um, we should, it should be um, a nonpartisan race, in my opinion, because you wouldn't, as a judge, you, you can't, you're not making law. So Democrat, Republican, you're not, you're following the law and the legislation is making law, uh, but you're not going to be making, you know, when you're, you know, some people like if you're running as a Democrat or you're running as a Republican, sometimes, for example, like the sheriff in, uh, in the states of Illinois, you know, in the state of Illinois, you have to, if you're Republican, maybe they make certain uh, choices based on their programs that are more Republican based or de Democratic based. We don't have that. You know, as a judge, I'm not going to be putting out programs. Right. I'm not. I would. I have to follow the programs that come down. But I don't. I don't independently create certain programs. Of course. You know, so right. things like that. It's it's hard because you know what you want is 
what you want as in a judge, and there's no doubt, is that you want someone who's going to be fair and impartial and follow the law. That's what you want. Those oh. are the, the, the core, and that they're going to listen to you. Right. A lot of judges do or have gone on to like higher political office, though. Is that probably, is it? would you surmise that's why they would do that and have to be part of, because there's been judges who've gone and tried to climb the political ladder sure to be you know and that's sure. one of their thing i was a circuit court judge back in mm -hmm. you know whatever day mm -hmm. i mean sure and there are situations where they might deviate and go do something right. completely different and maybe running as a democrat or republican would help them in that situation but i agree with you though i would like to i mean it it i don't think it it, it, it for me it really doesn't it really doesn't pepper what's going on because i guess if you're you know if you're facing a serious situation with a judge the last thing on your mind is whether he's republican or democrat but i i do to your point though i do kind of agree that all shades of impartiality should definitely be you know attached to a judge like you shouldn't be you shouldn't have to declare a party we don't need to know what your favorite color is you know uh gary o's or mike and denise's it doesn't matter you know you know, and to that end, you know, what you really want, like I said, someone who's fair and impartial, but you kind of look at the dynamics of the judiciary, right? And right now, uh, prior to Judge Cruz's appointment as a circuit judge, and then when he ran and, and won his election, there were no minority judges, no Latino judges, no a circuit judges, right. no Latinos, no African American, mm -hmm. none. And so the circuit judges are different than the associate judges, right? So your circuit judges are the ones that help, um, that they vote on appointing associate judges. They also vote on public, or I'm sorry, policy and procedure that, you know, impact the courtrooms. Uh -huh. So, you know, what has happened since Judge Cruz um, was appointed, we've gotten a more diverse judiciary, right? Good. Now we have five Latino judges. We have one African-American judge, mm -hmm. one Indian judge. And uh, we have three, with me, circuit judges, female circuit judges. Here's what's important. I'm going to be a judge when you say you Yeah, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but what's important with the circuits is that, you know, diversity is nice, right? Mm -hmm. Diversity means we have the numbers. But inclusion is what really matters, too. Okay. Right. So diversity is being invited to the dance. Come to the dance with us. Right. Inclusion is asking you to dance, asking you, let's go dance. Right. And what I mean by that is you have a voice. You impact the policy and the procedure in the King County courtrooms. Those are the types of things that we need. Do we have a diverse judiciary? Yes. Do we have diverse judges who are actually, do actually have a voice at the table? Now we do mm -hmm. with Judge Cruz, with Judge Villa, with myself. That's what's important. And that those unique perspective, our unique background, our unique perspective that's different from the other circuit judges that are there. That's what matters. Because for example, you know, we're we talk about how is Zoom gonna impact the courtrooms? How do we make sure we give our community access to the courtrooms? You don't want people, judges who only have the perspective of, ah, oh, let's take, you know, we can take Zoom down, it doesn't matter. People will do it the old school way. People just find a way to get to court. You can have other judges like myself who would say, hey, hey, let's back up for a second. Because bus ride from Aurora to the Judicial Center in St. Charles is a tough feat when, A, you don't have child care, maybe you don't have money for the bus, or when you use a tank of gas to get to the Judicial Center when you could be using that money for food or groceries or other basic necessities. Right. So, you know, that's what's important is that the people that are sitting at the table are diverse and that they're included and have a voice. And so that's why, you know, people think or people say to me, why does it matter that you're running as a circuit judge? This is why it matters do to you, have an inclusive judiciary. Do you think any of these new, um, do you think that any of these new measures that we see taking place that are helping the average person, do you think any of that would have happened if COVID didn't happen? Probably not, which is a sad state of affairs because look how helpful it is. So helpful. See, that's where, and you. And so, so, and I know sometimes you think to yourself, man, COVID has really wrecked havoc on us. But there has been some, some really great nuggets that have come out of it. Some with a capital S. Including I, Zoom. It's crazy. And, and you know what? And this is because it was, um, it was Jamie Mosser. Mm -hmm. 
Jamie Mosser, the second time we interviewed her, I will never this 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 is the kind of thing like on the one hand, this is what makes me like vote for a person, but at the same time, this is the kind of thing that I care about. We're interviewing Jamie Mosser. She was like, hey, look, can we wrap it up at like 855? Because she's like, I got court at nine. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you got you got to leave in that? No. We wrapped it up. She bust the laptop out yeah. and then went on a huge Zoom conference call for whoever the person was, whatever the case was, to do her thing. And we had to be quiet in the background. But I thought, because the person wasn't in jail. Sure. So he was able to keep abreast of what's going on with the case. And I thought to myself, wow, mm -hmm. like how it's still going on, but it's a little bit, I won't say a softer touch, but it's just simply accommodating the, the basic reality that we're at now. Yep. None of that would have happened without COVID. Right. That's, I know. it's sad. I know. It, it really is. It's sad. It is. It is. And you know, I have people that zoom in at 1030 and they're calling me from their job site. You know, they're calling from inside of a factory or outside doing construction. And, and you know, I hesitate to say that because I told someone that they were like, they're in court. They need to not be doing those things. I get that. But they're also in traffic court and they're still they still have to work. Right. I don't this want is them for to five take, miles over the speed and, limit. And it's also for like five or six minutes. Right. You know, I talk to them. Sometimes they're, you know, it's a quick post sentence like, hey, you still some owe some money. Do you need a little extra time to make those payments? Yes, I do. Okay. Three months, we'll see you then. You know? And we're done. Within five months or five minutes, we're done. You know? I don't want them to take their lunch hour during that time when they have other things that they need. And maybe that's not the the you know. Let me let me say this: when you get to felony court and you're sitting there on more serious sure, crimes, of course, you probably shouldn't be zooming in from work, right? Or driving a car. But honestly, I mean, well, yeah, not a driving a car because well, that happened. Good. That happened recently. <laughs> but no, that just happened. Did you see that? No, uh, I've seen some things. Oh, uh, I, I don't think, even want to tell you. I know you have. I, girl, I know you have. <laughs> uh, no, this was in um, where was it? Was it Oak Park? This was like a week ago. A guy was on a suspended license oh. case and he was zooming into court driving. <laughs> yeah, the camera off, like, camera off. The camera judge off. was like, the judge was like, Mr. So and so, are you driving? He was like, oh, I had to, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? Okay. Victoria Hallamon, mom, not a good job. Good morning to you as well. Humanizing the process. That's what Josie Mendoza Geller says. Humanizing the process. That's right. Yes. Justice is being served. Yes. Because if you do mess up, they'll just put out a warrant for you. And then no, no Zoom call is going to save you. But I, I do believe that, because again, the problem isn't the judiciary. The problem really isn't even how the laws are applied. Could be a problem. But you can't dehumanize people for trying to get by. It's like they shouldn't be treated the same in traffic court as felony court and, and, and um, uh, violence and what have you. So I, I do appreciate that. I think it's a good thing. Um, the time is 849. How can we help you? <laughs> get the vote or get the word out okay. uh, for people to vote. Um, that's the most important thing. You know, it's because of COVID, uh, we've been pushed back. <clears throat> right. So the actual um, election primary day is June 28th. And June so 28th. That's hard, right? Because when I think of June 28th, I think that July 4th is that weekend and my mind is on the weekend. Right. Um, and look out weekend, here we come. Freestyle, Latin freestyle. No, oh, come on. Oh, damn, oh. my bad. Ah, <laughs> failed on my own show. Oh, Terrible. man. <laughs> oh, man. I see you singing with everybody else, but uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um. I got to get my. That's house freestyle? What is that? Okay, I got to get my music up. Got to get it up. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, to really just get the word out there and okay. that when people do go out to vote that it's for me. <laughs> okay, good. That's uh, the most important thing. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors. You know, we're going to be putting signs out soon. Um, so if anybody would like a sign, just, you know, send me your address and I will definitely put it on. And I will tell you one thing that's really important is that this is a <clears throat> sub-circuit race, right? So only the people that live in judicial sub-circuit one will be able to vote for me. It's not a county-wide race. Judicial sub-circuit one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh. All right. How do people even know that? How do you even well, find so out I'm, if you're... I know, because I, I try to tell people the... Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, it's west of Orchard, blah, blah, and people are still looking at me like, I don't even know if I... And if somebody told me that, I would be like, oh, I don't know if I... Um, so I have a link now, and I'm going to put it on my website where people okay. can click, and they can put their address, and it'll tell them if they're in Subcircuit 1. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so we got to rock the vote. Just rock the vote hard. Get out there and vote. <laughs> Get out there and vote. Yes. Um, have you had any challenges during this uh, during this uh, you know journey and getting and preparing to uh, fight to retain? And by challenges, I mean you know not from uh, other candidates or anything like that, but like what what are the challenges? What what does it look like? What is the uh, what's the tough uphill battle for a person like you? So I think the hardest part is you know someone told me Bianca, people don't know you. And I'm like, yeah, I guess people don't know me because right. I have I, I don't sit on the boards here or in any of the boards here in Aurora and any of the organizations here. And while my name hasn't been out there for the last 15 years, I've been dedicated to this county for the last 15 years. And I've kind of been working behind the scenes. So right. even before becoming a prosecutor, I was a victim advocate for the King County State's Attorney's Office. And, you know, in that role, I was helping victims of violent crimes that were happening in our community. And. Um, then after that, I became a prosecutor. And so I've been working to make sure that this county um, is safe, that, that justice is served for everyone, not just the victims, but for people that have witnessed crimes, people that are charged with crimes, but making sure that the best outcome for our entire community and what that looks like. And so, um, yes, I, I haven't done some of that stuff, but I am out here and, and I have been working and I'm dedicated to this. You know, I'm the becoming a judge has never been a situation like, ooh, now look at me, I'm a judge. No, I, I will never have that outlook because to me, I'm just a regular person. Right. This title doesn't make me. What makes me is how I can serve the community. Right. How can I serve you, you know, the person who's standing in my courtroom? Um, so, and, and even after you win, you, will, you will still be... <laughs> say it loud and say it proud. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkle that on the mic, yeah. After you win, <laughs> hey, you know we like to, um, yeah, we like that's you know we forward looking. Mm -hmm. um, but even after you win, you will still be in the same position. You'll still be at twelve hundred East Indian Trail. What is or are there going to be new duties and new roles? What is so what comes next? I you know so as a as a judge, you can serve in so many different positions. You can be in traffic. You can be in family. You okay. can be in felony, um, DUI, domestic. Um, so I don't know where I would be moved to. I okay. don't know if they would put me. In, I don't even know. I can't even guess. But I won't be in traffic my entire career. Right. Although I would love to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, Interesting. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, the time is 8.53. You got my vote. Judge Bianca Camargo Aww. for Kane County Circuit Judge. Awesome. We can hit the clap for that. Yay. We can hit the clap for that. <laughs> hit the super clap for that. Yay. <laughs> The live audience is clapping. Yeah. Oh, they in here. <laughs> they in here. You guys like, prove it. Turn the camera right, around. Right, nah, right, it's right. only me. Right. <laughs> Monica has the day off. Oh. All right. Uh, a couple more pieces of the local bits of information for you guys so that you can enjoy what's happening and what's coming up. First Friday's returns in February. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the Water Street Mall, right? across the street from where we are down here uh, should be a really good place of activity coming up soon with the return, the annual return of the Aurora Farmers Market. I don't believe that's until March or April though. I don't believe it's until March or April. Um, Saturday at A Town Boxing Club, 727 Hill Avenue, State Representative Barbara Hernandez will be hosting a great women's self-defense demo class. Water snacks will be provided. For more information or to register, call 630-270-1848. And um, yeah, go out there and learn all the techniques of how to defend yourself. You know? And that was all off the top of the dome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, I do this news. I do this news. You do this every day? Every, right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I got all the, I got it. I got all the news for you. Dates, for times. You. Jennifer Ryan Mayton. Good morning to you, dear friend. Good to see you. Vanessa Rodriguez Aguirre. Vanessa Rodriguez Aguirre was listening to Good Morning Aurora when I was recording in my bathroom. Vanessa Rodriguez Aguirre, a 
big happy new year to you and your entire family all right uh let's see here cruz ocho thank you for clapping my brother dolores mendoza good morning and christine walker bianca camargo say it loud say it proud <laughs> i like that i like that all right you guys uh so it's 8 56 a.m this has been a fantastic episode so um with the last couple of minutes that we have i think um what i'd like to ask you about so you you had a if i'm not mistaken maybe not your most recent event but you had the mike and denise's event mm -hmm. uh that looked like it was well attended yes and then you had another event at the alive center yes was that was that the most recent one at the alive center or with the pizza with it i think so yeah that i just stopped into the Say hi and support. Oh. That wasn't my event. No, okay. No, no. Okay. I just like to. See, I like what they're doing. You know, there are certain organizations that I'm really like proud of, even though I have nothing to do with mm -hmm. them. Uh, you know, like Simply Destiny and the Alive Center, um, Marie Wilkinson, right. you know, all the food pantries, Aurora Interfaith. You know, I'm very proud of what they're doing and all the work that they're putting in. So right. when they have events, I like to just go and support. Okay. Like you know. Um, not particularly per se your no event no not my right, event at right. all but you know i i was there and it was just funny because um uh, i think they were counting on some other volunteers so i just w dropped off a cake and then they were like hey can you set up the tables i'm like i sure can <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, nice. you know, but i'm happy to do it because you know i see that they're doing good work and, right. and i'm very proud of what they're doing that's a good yeah. thing mm -hmm. um what's so what uh you know brand new year brand new month top of the month top of the year What's on your calendar? What's coming up with the events? Anything that we should know about locally? So um, I, uh, as it relates to fundraisers, I cannot speak on fundraisers sure. because as a sitting judge, I can't um, solicit any funds. Um, and so what I have coming up is um, I'm going to do a pizza and petition drive. Okay. I'm hoping to set that up at Luigi's if things, you know, all run smooth. I okay. just sent the email out yesterday. Oh, on Perry Street. <laughs> yeah. 732 Perry Street. <laughs> See? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right, friends of ours, Bill Poss. Good morning. <laughs> so um, hopefully we can set that up where people can come sign petitions. So okay. uh, originally we needed 500, but because of COVID, they've reduced that down to, um, if I remember, 357. Um, but we're going to try to get a, maybe just a little bit more than that. Okay. Um, so we will do petition drives. Um, I'll put all of that on my social media. Um, petitions come out January 13th, and then they're due March 7th. So we got about eight weeks to get over 300 signatures. Eight so. weeks to get over 300 signatures. To get on the ballot. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Okay. Are you uh, you confident? Uh, yeah. 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 Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna leave you petitions and then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would do, you know what? I I would I would do that. I would do that I know. because I you know that I I had the I had the fortune of interning um for a state representative and i've done a few things re in in the past couple of years that i didn't think i was i just never saw that you know i that's not you know those those doors and everything were never really even shown right um but it was really cool and i believe now with the way the world is going with the way people are interacting with each other or perhaps the lack of interaction that we've seen right. in the past four or five years like i'm happy to lend my voice or whatever to like to do that kind of thing you know what i mean like i that's why I, on the show we tell people to get back that's why i'm reading this yep. aurora advocate and go get your covid vaccine because like that need we need more of that. You need more good things that are going to help people get together. And you can't if if people want to see change, then they need to they need to take part and do it. Sure, absolutely. This is a boat. Mm -hmm. If you are you got to get on this oar and help us get to the next whatever it is. Sure. Like um, I remember uh, Dan Barrero. He's in the chat. <laughs> Dan Barrero. The first day I met Dan Barrero, we were kind of talking about that too, about like the 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 basic duty that everybody has. Mm -hmm. The basic duty everybody has is to participate in the city, in your local government, in yep. your municipality. You have to participate. Yep. 
even if it's you know from recycling to voting yep. you got to participate and um the more people do that the better off we'll all be yep. kind of thing uh all right it's nine o'clock a.m so the show ends on a positive note wait do we forget anything we talked about you as a prosecutor we talked <laughs> about you as a judge petitions pizza we got everything, I think, right? We got to do a part two one of these days. Yeah. Yeah, we'll that, come. That would be great. Yeah, that would be good. That would be I, good. I have to tell you this, and I don't think it's a secret, but after I got appointed, I started looking at, you know, what's going on in Aurora, you know, that's new that I don't know about, and I stumbled upon your podcast, and I've listened pretty much religiously every single day, and the reason I do that is because this is where I get my local what's going on. This is how I do my calendar. When I hear you talking about like, oh, the self-defense class, I jot it down. I appreciate so, it. Do you know what I mean? Because you won't find that really anywhere else. And so I I just, I thank you. For thank really, you. I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> for really it. informing us and letting us know what's going on because it's really, you're really doing a really great thing here. Thanks. I appreciate I'm it. I'm proud of you. <laughs> trying to bring us, trying to bring us all together. Yeah. It's, it's a city, you know, so yeah. we, we should all, and everybody deserves a voice too. Absolutely. Everybody. If you got an Etsy shop, you deserve a voice. If you had a dream of making candles and now you're doing that, but you're still working at ComEd because it pays the bills, mm -hmm. that's all right. That's Good Morning Aurora right there. Yep. Um, the show ends on a positive note. What is your message today for um, for the people? So uh, taking us into the year. Just kind of the same like what you were saying is that, you know, in making sure that we're progressing as a community, as a county, we have to go out there and we have to do our part. And I'm hopeful, you know, this is the one part in my life where everything in the past, it's been on me. You wanna to go to graduate school, you wanna to go to undergrad, you wanna do this, you wanna do that. I've been in charge of that and I'm the one that's gonna make sure that happens or not. This is the one thing in my life that I'm relying on other people to really, really help me out to put the word out there, to go vote, to do part, you know, do early voting if you're going to be on vacation. All of this is really what I need. You know, people people have said to me, so you got this position because you're a Latina. No, I got this position because I'm the most qualified candidate. And when they were interviewing us, they saw that. And the Illinois Supreme Court, they saw that. Mm -hmm. And they made that decision. But the other prong to that and the bonus to that is that I am Latina and the first Latina circuit judge here in King County. In the, in the 185 years that King County has had circuit judges, I'm the first one. And right. I, when will this happen again? Right. And so I hope that that motivates people to want to go out there and to vote. No, that is, that is special. Yeah, that, that means a lot. And so that, that's really what I'm hoping for. And we can do this. And we can do this. Come on, Aurora. Michelle Gums. <laughs> Good morning to you as well. Bianca, show with the crew. Man, you got to, oh, look at all the, okay. All right, yeah, we can clap for that too. <laughs> all right. Um, so we appreciate, this is a good show. Yay. <laughs> I hope you had, hope you feel like you had a good interview. I hope you feel. I do. I'm yeah. just kind of nervous. <laughs> still, still nervous? Still nervous. <laughs> um, Allie Hernandez says, thank you. Thank you. Very good. And thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. That's right, yeah. Allie, for both of us. Go Marines. <laughs> and Navy. Um, all right. Well, we hope that you guys enjoyed this morning's show. It's a brand new year, brand new month, brand new day. Uh, we've got a lot more to go. Good Morning Aurora will be two years old this year. Um, so all of you guys keep doing everything that you're doing. We're glad to be here and be of service to you guys. Uh, we appreciate Judge Bianca Camargo for coming in and sharing things with us. Um, I have to ask you two things that I know the viewers are dying to know. <laughs> Number up? one, when are those hoodies going to be available for sale? <laughs> <laughs> They're coming this year. <laughs> it has been tough. I have been, I and I said they were going to come for winter in the summer. It is tough finding the right people and the right prices because the shirts we got that's why there's two different types of shirts because the logo that i wanted didn't come in the first bets it is a pra i need another intern just to help do marking up but they're coming soon okay okay yeah okay, they're coming okay. soon okay and then um when is your birthday the uh good morning aurora birthday party good morning aurora's birthday party should be in the week of may 11th okay it should be in the week of May 11th. We'll be having that with uh, McCarty Mills. 
We so McCarty I don't know Mills. McCarty Mills is that the left ventricle? That's the left ventricle. That's it. That's it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so McCarty Mills and Good Morning Aurora started in the same week, or uh, they're, they're about a about a week apart in that same span of time. So we celebrate them together. That's going to be awesome. Yep, that's right. Save the calendars for that, you guys. All right. Um, be blessed. Have a great day. And as I always tell you, take care of yourself and each other. Yay.